This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Half a year ago, and who knows how many reviews later, you probably already know that Canon's launch of their mirrorless R5 last July, a camera with a spectacular suite of capabilities, including a highly performant 45 megapixel full frame sensor, internally recorded 8K video, no compromise 4K video up to 60p, outstanding autofocus, and if not actually eight stops of IBIS, as Canon asserted, still best in class, was marred by overheating problems, which firmware updates, while making a difference, did not completely solve. You also know that even so, most reviewers named the R5 their 2020 camera of the year. Being the statistical outlier I so often am, I didn't. And here's why. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to talk with you about Canon's R5 six months after launch. Though first, a quick shout out to our friends at B&H for getting one to me. Guys, please show B&H some love by checking them out for all of your photo, video, audio, and electronics needs at www.bhphotovideo.com. Anyway, here's the thing. The R5 could have been, it was specced and hyped as, a knockout blow to the entire industry, the one camera to do it all, which is a very seductive proposition. Instead, from a mundane perspective of day-in, day-out, real-world use, I see it as the second generation of a camera lineup that will require a third generation to get it truly right for its intended purpose. And by that, I mean an outstanding hybrid camera equally at ease as a stills and video platform, because until then, this is most assuredly not the case. Great stills camera? Yeah, pretty much. Great video camera? Yeah, not quite, though tantalizingly close. The simple fact is that if they'd focused on usability rather than hypeability, if they'd forgotten about 8K video altogether, working instead to make the R5 the best 4K hybrid possible, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But they didn't. So, those of us who want that balance will have to wait, I think, for a hardware upgrade which includes robust heat management, unlimited 4K recording, a full-sized HDMI port, a matched pair of CF Express card slots, and a small but dedicated switch for moving back and forth between video and stills because without these things, at least when it comes to video, this $4,000 camera is not as good for what we do as the almost four-year-old $1,400 GH5 we've used as a daily driver since its release in March 2017, along with a G9 we've used for the last year or two. And I'm using right now. Then again, for our stills work, we use different cameras altogether, a Leica CL for Claudia and an SL2 for me. I don't know if the R5 was all that in a bag of potato chips, we'd give up our Leicas. Okay, we wouldn't, but it would be something we'd at least ponder. The good news? Your mileage may vary. And if you don't care about video or are confident that you won't hit that thermal shutoff in the middle of your shoot, aren't worried about two different card slots slowing down the faster one when recording simultaneously to both. Have no need for regularly using an external recorder to overcome the overheating or 30 minute recording limit. The R5 is, along with the R6, the first Canon bodies worthy of the appellation successor to the legendary 5D series and nothing but your inclination and budget stand between you and one of the best cameras on the market today, capable of beautiful stills imagery without worry about autofocus performance. Like this.
Then again, at just about four grand, it ought to be. But hold that thought. Though actually, before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to Squarespace for making this episode possible. There's a reason why I've used Squarespace for more than five years now, and why I always recommend it to anyone looking for a beautiful, powerful, and performant, easy-to-use and cost-effective web presence, as in pretty much everybody. It just plain works, no website administrator or programmers needed. And it is so fully featured, without being overwhelming, that it can quickly and easily grow with you as your business needs evolve. Elegant design templates, custom domain names, e-commerce appointment setting, shipping and email integrations, plus SEO, social media, and analytics, Squarespace really does have it all. And we use it all. So if you're thinking about creating or refining your online presence, check them out at www.squarespace.com hue for a free, no credit card needed trial. And if you decide to move forward, save 10% at checkout by using the discount code hue. Thanks, Squarespace. Look. This is really simple. One, the R5 is a great stills camera, full stop, and now they've bulked up the RF line with some really interesting glass. Two, the R5's 8K video is incredible. It is capable of insane detail, profoundly greater detail than 4K, like this. And this. However, three, most of us wouldn't be able to see the difference in normal viewing sizes and distances on a 4K display, not even an 8K display if we had one, and most of us don't, most of us don't even have 4K, and most of us wouldn't want to see the difference when it comes to human faces, because Full HD years ago was already shocking enough to viewers and on-screen talent alike that we entered the age of electronic filtering, which is uber creepy. Four. 8K also makes significant demands on storage and processing that cost time and money, which, if we insisted on 8K, would still be unnecessary if we chose the right lens on a 4K body, even something as small and inexpensive as a $1,200 Micro Four Thirds Panasonic G9 with $1,500 like a DG Vario Elmer at 50-200 2.8, like this. It does have a full-sized HDMI port for recording without time limit to our Ninja 5. It does switch instantly from video to stills. It does have matched dual card slots. It does have IBIS. It does have a flippy screen. It does do 4K 60p, and it doesn't require those overheads. Our GH5 adds unlimited internal recording and DCI 4K to the mix, though neither camera has nearly the autofocus of the R5, nor low light or quite the color science, yet we've been more than happy with all of this for years. Yeah, the autofocus of the R5 does make things so much easier. Best autofocus implementation along with the R6 I've ever seen, and that includes Sony, sometimes. When we decided we needed higher image quality and wanted to experience joy every time we picked up our cameras, however, for our personal street work, we moved to Leica, a CL for Claudia, a full-frame SL2 for me. Hold that thought. Five. Five. But if we were still to insist upon 8K, the R5 can't reduce those overheads by recording all I to the SDXC card, nor out through the HDMI cable to an external recorder, which, like our Ninja 5, doesn't record 8K anyway. It's CF Express or Bust, baby. But there's only one slot for the one of those, and they get very expensive. 
6. With this said, a GH5 or G9 doesn't allow us to punch in for stills the way the 45 megapixel R5 can, and while the same rules apply to stills shooting for distance and lens selection, at least for street work, which as I just mentioned is our milieu, a high resolution body with small prime lens makes a lot of sense, which is why I went with the SL2 and we both went for the best possible glass we could afford. So that we could crop the crap out of an image, because neither Claudia nor I want to carry a 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 around our neck with the other one in a shoulder bag. Images like this. All of which, finally, is to say... 7. These are the reasons why the R5 is so tantalizingly, frustratingly close to being, but ultimately for us, for now, not great, and yet a camera that pretty much anyone else currently using any, and I mean any brand, would want to consider. Let me recap and wrap things up this way. The good news is that the R5 along with the R6 are Canon's first truly credible and competitive ILC mirrorless full-frame cameras, worthy successors to the legendary 5D series. Compared to that series, the R5 and R6 offer all the benefits of mirrorless ILCs along with superior autofocus, burst rates, articulating rear screens, and the best path to mirrorless for current Canon DSLR shooters with an investment in legacy EF glass and or a desire to explore the best of the RF catalog like the 1585 1.2s or the 600 and 800 F11s. The R5 offers better build quality, ergos and video specs than its nearest Sony competitors, the A7 R3 and 4, better video specs than the Nikon Z7 II. It has better autofocus than everybody, except Sony sometimes. Though in our tests, its tracking up close was superior to Sony's latest, the A7S III. The R5's 45 megapixel sensor is competitive in terms of color, dynamic range, and low light performance with the best out there. It represents, even at 4,000 bucks, better bang for the buck than Panasonic's S1R and Leica's SL2 as a stills camera. Maybe not the SL2S as a video camera. More good news. The RF lens line, though I didn't really cover this, threatens to catch up with Sony and pass by everyone else over the next two years because Canon has the wherewithal and ambition to do so. The bad news is that the R5 is not nearly as reliable or usable or performant a partner for even 4K recording as Sony's A7S III but still costs $400 more than that or the 61 megapixel A7R4. It costs a whole lot more than that and is a whole lot bigger and heavier as a system than a Micro Four Thirds Panasonic GH5 or G9, an APS-C Fujifilm X-T4 or X-S10. I encourage you to look at my reviews of those as well. Canon should have prioritized heat management and unlimited 4K recording over 8K. They should have prioritized a better connection for external recording devices. They should have prioritized easier switching between stills and video. When it comes to lenses for the R5, I'd personally have preferred it if they'd prioritized excellent, accessibly priced, moderately fast primes like the 20, 24, 35, 50, and 85 1.8s Nikon did, rather than the look what I can do Halo products like the non-image stabilized 28 to 70 f2 or 50 and 85 1.2s actually. But that's just me. And they do now have beyond the 35 1.8, a 50 1.8, and most recently an 85 f2. I will have to give them a go. The maybe not so surprising news is that pre-production planning and lens selection can overcome much of the R5's full frame 8K advantage with something as inexpensive and underpowered as a thousand buck G9 or XS10, except perhaps for autofocus. So maybe you continue to wait like we do for a phase detect AF equipped GH6, or perhaps it's a jump into APS-C land, which after all is what Super 35 is anyway, like Fujifilm's X-T4 or XS10, both of which do have phase detect AF, and I feel like they're one, maybe two firmware updates away from having autofocus just as good as Canon or Sony. Though, of course, they have their other foibles as well. And if you think long and hard about what you actually truly need from a camera, while still insisting upon a full-frame high-resolution body and appreciating build quality, ergonomics, and lens selection, well, the Nikon Z7 II at almost a thousand bucks less just might be a far better choice for most true hybrid shooters not already in the Canon fold. Finally, let's bring this back full circle to what I said at the outset. It could have been a knockout blow to the entire industry. The one camera to do it all. It does come close. But once more with feeling, I think it's fair to say that it's the second generation of a camera lineup that will require a third hardware generation to truly get it right. Though we all know the industry doesn't stand still. Sony A7 IV, anyone? Can I hear a GH6 with phase detect autofocus? Can you give me a GH6 with phase detect autofocus? The R5 could have been the camera to entice me back into the Canon fold, a place where I was ensconced for more than 40 years. 
For now, however, we'll happily stand pat with what we've got. My own 5D2 sold long ago on eBay. My bought brand new OG 4 megapixel 1D having a place of honor just outside of frame. Like right here. For others of us, though, or given the appropriate circumstances, the R5 right now is suddenly the ILC mirrorless full-frame camera system to be. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. For all of your website needs, visit www.squarespace.com hue for a free, no credit card needed trial. And when you're ready to move forward, save 10% by using the discount code hue at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost-to-you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.